What's up, y'all? My name's Gene. I'm the founder of the Go-Getter family and WeBuyAndHelp.com. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about the due on sale clause and how we defend against that to make sure our subject to property investments are safe. First, I want to thank you guys uh, for tuning in okay, uh, to the Go-Getter Family channel where it is my mission to bring everyday work, hard-working people, actionable knowledge to become real estate investors. Um, and using we're using Subject 2 and Creative Financing, which is a no money and low money uh, entry into real estate investing. All right. With Subject 2, we simply take over an existing mortgage guys i just bought a house um last week i think or maybe like the end of the week before um i just bought a house guys that the guy wanted eighty seven thousand for this house guys i just I, I did my conversational negotiating bought that house and i simply bought it for uh his existing mortgage payments which are 700 bucks a month so i just have to make those payments um, I did pay out some equity, which uh, I paid out $12,000 in equity, but I'm using my lease option down payment fee, my lease option fee to pay for that, that $12,000. So we're using other people's money, guys. So um, yeah, it's my mission to bring you guys that actionable knowledge so that you can close these transactions, all right, so that you can become entrepreneurs. Or if you are an entrepreneur in the beginning, um, you know, this will help you get there. You know, when we are betting on ourselves, we have got to... Uh, We've got to cross all our T's. We've got to dot all of our I's because we are betting on ourselves. So we've got to make that bet on the with the least amount of risk possible. We do. And especially um, since our family's financial well-being, our financial well-being is on the line. You know, it is. So uh, I hope that I bring you that actionable knowledge and um, information so that you can do this. And um, also that you don't have to pay thousands of dollars for right i'm giving you guys more than surface information okay that uh, most people charge thousands of dollars for this stuff um and the go-getter family we just don't do that um I, I don't want you to uh pay me thousands of dollars and then have anxiety when you go out there to start to implement this strategy right it, i mean if you have spent thousands of dollars with me and then you go out and you try to implement this strategy, but you have anxiety in the back of your mind because you know that you've spent your last $3,000, $2,000, and you've got to make your car payment this month or cer certain bills you've got to pay. So you have to close this deal so that there's desperation on you. You know, people can smell desperation and that's not a good thing. That doesn't help, guys. So I'm here to help you. Um, so I hope that this brings you value. Okay, so today we are talking about the big, uh, bad, do on sale clause right with subject to when we take over a person's mortgage the main thing that people talk about is all oh, the do on sale clause you know i've called i've heard it called all types of stuff from people that don't know what it is the the sale final clause and you know this that whatever right guys if you do things correctly and cross your t's and dot your i's uh you can do these transactions and you don't have to even worry about the do on sale clause. Okay. Now I've got to say this. I am not a lawyer. I'm not an accountant. All right. Uh, but I am a go getter. Okay. So this is all just informational purposes only. Okay. Um, um, you are advised, you know, to speak to an attorney, you know, um, speak to a professional certified professional. Um, and they will, they have to tell you the, the information and the facts. All right. So, what we have here, okay, the due on sale clause, guys. What this is, see, with with, uh, with subject to, you go in and you take over an existing mortgage, okay? So all you have to do is continue to make those mortgage payments and you own a home because the title to that home is in your name, but the debt remains with the seller. We don't personally guarantee that debt, guys. So there isn't a whole lot of risk to us. All, only thing we are risking is the mortgage payments that we that we are making. And then if we do any repairs, you know, that's our, that's our risk, guys. And our time, I mean... You know, so that's a, this is a pretty good way. You know, this is how the elite and the wealthy move. This is what they do because they own the banks. They own the corporations. So they're not going to play by the same rules as everyone else. Why would they do that? Like, that's not, if, if you create the game, the rules that you play by 
and then the rules that you make everyone else play by are different. That's just what it is. That's just the reality of the situation. It's not the same rules, guys, but the rules are there. The rules are there. So if we find this knowledge when we find it uh, and we implement it correctly, we play the game the same way that they do. Yeah. And this puts us at the same starting line now. Yeah. Yeah. It puts us at the same starting line, man. And there has not been many times in life where me personally, you know, where I come from, my dad was a construction worker all his life. Uh, my mother, uh, um, you know, had menial jobs here and there. So uh, we weren't at the same starting line. We started way back than, than most people. So so if you're if most people are starting here and, and we're starting back here, man, it's going to be hard to catch up. So with subject to and creative owner financing, we're starting at the same line. So now I can use those talents um, that we that 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 we have sharpened and honed over the years by um, man, by by by, by uh, uh, you know, shooting, uh, uh, shooting, uh, shooting the sevens, you know what I mean? With with our friends, you know, cracking jokes on each other, man, that sharpens your wit, you know, so that helps you that sharpens your mind, man, um, um, by working hard, by um, observing what other successful people do, because uh, we didn't have many role models. I know I didn't. Uh, um, you know, that would show me the way other than um, professional sports or music to become financially free. So we had to observe, you know, other things and we didn't get that insider uh, knowledge. Well, now with those powers of observation, those uh, uh, um, our mind, our wit being so sharp from those uh, 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 those sessions, you know, those roast sessions with the homies. You know what I mean? We used to go hard. Ooh, boy, hey, we used to get to it, but that sharpened us up. Now we can use that to play their game. So I'm going to get to it. I'm sorry. I get I start to rambling uh, sometimes, guys. So if I get off subject, like on a li uh, live show or something, hey, shoot something in the comments. Like, hey, Gene, <laughs> will you get back on subject, please? You're losing me here. <laughs> I, I would appreciate it. Uh, let me grab a pen. Okay. So, subject two, guys, in the in uh, uh, in the 80s, late 70s and 80s, when um, subject two was real big, uh, interest rates were high, right? They were they were uh, 14, anywhere from like 14 percent, all the way up to 22, 23 percent interest. Could you imagine that now? Woo! Oh, uh, they're land. It's like two percent, you know, 1.9 percent, three three and a half percent. Well, anyway, so this is what happened. If a person had a 14 percent interest rate on a mortgage and they fell behind on those payments, it was in the bank's favor to foreclose on that property and on that debt so that they could loan that, start that debt out to somebody else, loan that debt out to somebody else at a higher interest rate. So it increased their profit margins. But what happened was people, uh, investors like us were coming in, you know, the Lou Browns, the Ron Legrands, you know, the godfathers of subject to and creative financing. They were coming in, they were getting these properties, you know, they were scooping these properties up and the banks were kind of losing profits or projected profits um, uh, uh, because they could have, again, foreclosed on them, on those, on those, that particular loan, and then loaned it back out at a higher interest rate, therefore making more profit. So they, uh, they've sent their lobbyists to Washington, D.C., and, um, the politicians who, you know, usually are pretty chummy with the rich people, um, they came up with the 1983 Garn St. Germain Act. Um, and that was born from a litigation, a De La Cuesta decision, all right? I'm not going to get too deep into court litigation and all that stuff, but if you're a nerd like me, the De La Cuesta case, read it. It'll help you. Um, so anyway, 1983, they came up with the Garn St. Germain Act, okay? And what that was is um, it made it okay for banks to call loans due for particular things. Pretty much it's a breach of contract, all right? Now, this is a civil matter, okay? It's not a criminal matter. It's civil, all right? So um, they have recourse. That That is a bank's recourse. That's your lender's recourse is the due on sale, okay? This is why it's a civil matter. So, you know, people, man, people, not a lot, not a lot of people know about subject two, um, and they definitely don't want us to know about it because it gives us a fair chance. So, um. People, oh, it's illegal. You can't do that. And I'm like, man, no, it's not. Where? How? What law is that? I haven't heard of it. Can you Can you tell me? Can you show me it? Because I'd love to know. I mean, you know, if I'm doing something illegal, I'd love to know about it. Can you show me the law? No, they can't because it's not illegal, guys. It's not. This is how the rich and the wealthy move. But the, it's civil. They can, uh, you know, civil. That's, that's where their recourse is in civil court, you know, and that goes towards your assets, all right? So... They came up with the Garn St. Germain Act, okay? Um, and the thing is huge, man. Garn St. Germain Act, super thick. But in there, there's that due on sale clause, which is in darn near every mortgage now, man. 99.9999% of mortgages have a due on sale. But like I said at the beginning, 
when the rich people, the wealthy and the powerful, they create a system, they make rules for people like us, everyday hardworking people, right? And then they play by different rules, though. <laughs> yeah. Let that sink in for a minute. Okay, so the 1983 Garden St. Germain Act, it made these rules for the everyday working people who are trying to get financial freedom. Okay, but they left these other rules for themselves to play by. But but they 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 try to hide it. They try to hide it, you know. Um, um, and they stigmatize certain things to make it seem as if a, a poor person or a middle class person does this. They got this stigma of, oh my God, you're poor. Oh, you shouldn't do that. No, that's not, man. No, we've got to stop that. No, we can buy houses on contract. We can sell houses on contract. That cuts out all the fees and the commissions and all of that crap. That's unnecessary. But there's a stigma attached to it, man. So it kind of makes it so people who are trying to keep up with the Joneses, they don't want to say, oh, yeah, I didn't. I don't have a mortgage. I bought, I'm buying this house on contract. Because then they'll think people are looking at them like, oh, my God, you're buying it on contract. What? No. So, guys, that's the best way to do it. You're saving yourself money. More profit, guys. You can give that to your kids. You can put it in a trust for your kids. I mean, so anyway, these rules that they made in this 1983 Garner St. Germain Act, um, they, they, there's certain reasons that a loan cannot be called due. A mortgage cannot be called due. All right. One of them is uh, uh, it cannot be called due for a, a death, a transfer, you know, transfer for a death. All right. Because you may inherit a property. I mean, you can't. That wasn't anything intentional. Um, so they can't call loan due for that. A divorce. Right. When a married couple gets a divorce and they owned a home, they're not going to live together anymore. You know, they're like, man, I don't want to live with you. You know what I mean? I'm trying to get up out of here. You know, I'm either trying to get you up out of here uh, 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 and I'm going to keep the house or I'm going to get up out of here and you can keep the house. Right. <laughs> so so with that, though, when you do that in a divorce, you've got to transfer deed. OK, you got to transfer the title to that house to whoever's keeping that house. So uh, usually they do it with a quit claim. That's quit with a T. They do it with a quit claim. Um. So it doesn't cost much and quick claims are pretty easy to do, but you're transferring title. So in the Garden St. Germain Act, they can't call on due for that, you know. Um, also, now, a lot of people will buy a home and then life will get better for them. So they will um, want to get, they'll want to upgrade, you know, they'll get a second mortgage, right? But who's, who's, who wants to carry two mortgages when you're upgrading? Right, you upgrade to a better house, but you still got to pay the mortgage on that old house. No, man, no, who, no, no, nobody want to do that. So what they did was uh, uh, a lease up to three years, right? A lease uh, up to three years, with but in that lease for it to uh, uh, for a, a bank not to be able to call that loan due, in that lease uh, it can't cannot it cannot have an option to buy. Okay. So we do, we do lease options. That's our, that's our favorite uh, exit strategy to go get our family. Um, lease options, all right, because we get that lease option fee, that non-refundable lease option fee. So with this, though, it's a, a lease of up to three years without an option to buy. Cannot have an option, right? But here is the big thing right here. And this, is how, this is how we buy. And this is how um, I suggest that everyone buy a subject to or, or, or buy with a traditional mortgage. Um, <laughs> A, a car. I mean, everything, guys. A revocable trust. Estate planning. Okay? Estate planning, right? Um, they cannot call a loan due uh, um, if it is for estate planning, right? So when you, and that is a revocable trust, um, a land trust. You know, most states are land states, but there are six states that do not have land trusts. They, those, those states are um, like where I live in Iowa. It's a, 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 a grantor living revocable trust, okay? Which is pretty much the same thing as a land trust, okay? Uh, just, you know, a different name, pretty much. Um, so, when you put something in a trust, that trust, it becomes an entity, right? It's almost like a, a living and breathing organism, man. <laughs> so, so uh, the trust owns the property now, not the individual, not the individual, okay? So the trust owns the property. Now that debt, that mortgage debt, it still stays on that on the person who acquired it, you know, who got qualified for it. Um, but a deed to a house, that can be changed as many times as you want, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten times. But that mortgage, if that mortgage hasn't been paid off yet, it still remains with that one person. Okay. So let me get let me get my marker here. Okay. We're gonna do this real quick, all right. Oh, uh, car title. Mm. 
versus a deed to a home, okay? This is what these look like, all right, guys? On a car title, if you get a loan from a bank um, to buy a car, you're on the top of that car title, it's going to have um, um, the lender's name. Lender, and then it's going to have your name. Gene, right, on that car title. So in order to pass title, if you want to sell that car, you have to satisfy this, this person, this lender. You've got to satisfy this debt before you can pass a clean and marketable title. So I can't, if I want to sell it to Bob, sell to Bob, I have got to, before I sell to Bob, I got to pay that off. So if I've got a five-year car loan and I've, I've only been paying on that car loan for two years, so I still have three years of payments left, I cannot sell this car to Bob with a clean title. So he, I cannot transfer the title over to Bob until I pay the remaining amount, remaining balance of that uh, debt to this lender. I've got to pay this lender. Pay off lender. Off lender. All right. Now, the beautiful part here is, okay, a deed to a home. Whole different animal, guys. Yeah. Yep. It's a whole different animal, guys. Um, this is the beautiful part because you know, real estate, um, wealth has been built on real estate, guys, throughout since the beginning of time. It really has. Uh so, so, um, the deed to a home, deed to a home, guys, it has one person's name on it. All right. I have a mortgage. I got a mortgage to buy this house. So on the deed, the deed is uh in my name. Gene, it says nothing about the debt, all right? It says nothing about the lender, all right, on that deed. So if I want to sell it to Bob, I can transfer, I can transfer the deed to my home to Bob without satisfying the lender. I don't have to satisfy this lender to uh, transfer this deed, okay? So I'm going to transfer this. I'm going to transfer this to Bob. Okay. Now, when I transfer to Bob, if Bob pays me in a big old lump sum um, and I transfer the title over to him, that's cool. I can do that, but I would still have to continue to make these payments. All right. Payments got to keep being made. Whoops. Payments got to keep being made to the lender. Um, and see, they, this, this is where the due on sale comes in because um, if I did that, right, and Bob, say I had a hundred thousand dollar house, okay, and I owed um sixty thousand on it. And Bob gives me a hundred grand, and I and and I just wanted to keep that hundred grand, and uh, do something with it, invest it or whatever, to, uh, in something else to make some more money. Um, and I just continue to make these mortgage payments to my lender. Man, that would be a good way, you know, to um, you know, to to get some startup capital, right? But banks know this, guys. Banks, man, they are all about money and that bottom line and their profit. Um, but they don't want the little guy to win either, you know? So they have thought about that, you know? Hey, I'm not going to give Gene a, a, a mortgage because he has good credit. And then Gene can um, turn around and sell this house that I have loaned him the money to buy to make a profit and then use the money that I loaned him to without paying me back. No. So that's where that do on sale because as soon as we transfer to Bob, Man, they can call that loan due. And when they call it due, you have 30 days. You have 30 days to pay that, uh, the remaining balance. Or they can foreclose on that property. Okay? So I got a little off here. This is what I wanted you guys to think. All right, listen. Let me erase this stuff here real quick. And I'm going to get back into it. Hey, that thing's got a magnet on it. I didn't know that. Okay, again, car title, lender, lender's name, lender name, and 
my name. Deed to a home? Who? Oh, my name. Okay? So, in order to satisfy, or in order to pass this title, a clean marketable title to sell it, I've got to satisfy that, that lender. I've got to satisfy that debt. Uh, um, so, that's the difference with the car title, okay? Now, with the title to a home, the deed to a home, there is no lender on there. There's no lender's name on there. So, you don't, we don't have to satisfy that debt, all right? Now, let me get back to what I was saying. So, so we don't have to satisfy that debt because the, the, it doesn't, it's not on there. The only thing is a mortgage, they, that mortgage, um, the property is collateral for that uh, loan. Okay, it's collateral for that loan. So they, the mortgage lender is the first place lien holder. All right, and I'll get deeper into that first place and second place lien holders because there is some creative stuff we can do um, with that creative. And so I just did it. I just did it. I got a $10,000 lien on a property that I was um, um, wholesaling, I got it dissolved. Didn't have to pay a dime because the lady that was the lien holder, she didn't want to negotiate and her lawyer gave her bad advice. So she didn't get anything. So I got the, man, it was beautiful. Anyway, um, so we want to sell this home, right? Now, if we sell to Bob, okay, and we think that we're going to keep that, uh, um, we think we're going to keep that big chunk of money because we still owe the bank, you know, 60, 70,000, whatever, and we sell to Bob, Bob gives us 100K, uh, we don't satisfy the, the debt uh, with the lender, they can call that loan due, okay? And we gotta pay that in 30 days. If we do not satisfy that debt in 30 days, they can foreclose on the property. Now, but if Bob, we sell to Bob, but Bob buys it with a trust. That's right. Uh, when you have a purchase agreement, you can have a trust created by an attorney or you can get the go-getter family trust documents. We have land trust document in our, in our land and the go-getter family, the TGGF uh, um, land trust document packet. We've got land trust and all of its documents. You can go to gogetterfamily.com to see that. Um, and then we've got the uh, living revocable trust in there as well. So it doesn't matter which state you live in. So all 50 states, all right, guys, you can do this. So if Bob buys with a trust, Okay, the trust owns the property, and that therefore that is uh, uh, that is uh, estate planning. That's estate planning. So the bank never gets uh, uh, triggered to trigger that due on sale because that's estate planning. Now what we do here's the key, guys. Here's the key. So we buy with a trust. Where do I want to put that? Buy with trust. All right, we buy with a trust. Now, here's the key. When we buy with a trust, okay, because trust, guys, it's um, it doesn't it doesn't completely protect you from being sued, but it's just extra layers of protection. Okay, it gives you it gives you those extra layers of protection because when people know that you have money, you know, they want to sue you. I mean, people sue for everything nowadays. I just got my um my business uh insurance uh <laughs> coverage in the mail. I don't want to show too much here. Okay, there's a policy number there. I'll cover that up. Yeah, look at that. That's my, uh, this is my, um, look how thick that is. That's my, this is my business insurance right here. That's my business insurance, man. I'm not about to read this whole thing. I don't got time. I don't got time. Look how, man, freaking long that is. My insurance brokers and agent, they are awesome. I'm going to do a show with them, guys. I'm going to interview them and get you guys some subject to insurance information. But... I've got subject to insurance information on the go-getter family member subscription, okay? And that thing costs you less than a tank of gas a month. It's $29.99, and there's exclusive video tutorials in there that will walk you through transactions. There's recorded phone calls uh, on there with me and um, uh, uh, prospects and sellers. Um, the, I just put a phone call on there of the subject to I just closed. That call's on there, so you get those negotiating tips. Anyhow, um... With the trust, we buy in a trust. So what we do with the trust, though, because you can name a trust whatever you want, all right? So let's say the address is on 123 Main Street. What we'll do is we'll name the trust 123 Main Land Trust. I don't put street on them. I just put 123 Main Land Trust. So when people look that up on, on public records to see who the owner of this particular property is, it'll come up 123 Main Trust. And we don't have to record the, the trust. Now, certain states you do. I know that California um, requires you to uh, record a trust document if there is a real estate transaction involved. All right. So you got to look that up in your state. Most states don't, though. 
Most states don't. So don't listen to gurus who say you don't have to record any trust documents because you might have to in your state, guys. All right. So you got to be careful with that um, because I learned some things the hard way uh, by listening to gurus, you know, but I'm always prepared, man. I cross my T's, dot my I's. So it wasn't anything um, catastrophic. So we name our trust one, two, three trust. All right. Now, with a trust, what happens is this. You got with a trust, you got a uh, let me erase this. Okay. With a trust, you got a trustee. Okay, and your trustee is the person who has control of that trust, and they are to they uh, um, take care of the financial aspects of that trust, growing the finances. But most importantly, they take care of the distribution of those finances. They distribute that to whoever the beneficiary of that trust is. Okay. That's the key, guys, right there. The beneficiary of the trust. When we buy a land trust, we make our LLC the beneficiary. So, uh, uh, um, so you got your trustee. It's John Doe. Now, the good thing about this is trustees, they have no liability. They have no personal liability um, for anything with that property. So if a person slips and falls on that property and they want to sue the trust, they cannot sue the trustee, guys. So you can use people to be trustees, man. Pay people to be trustees. You just got to um, uh, um, you gotta keep those documents and then you got to have other certain documents so you can replace them and things like that. Fire them if necessary. Um, so your trustee, they're going to distribute to the beneficiary. So you got your trustee, then you've got your beneficiary now the beneficiary is going to be bob that's right because i sold my property to bob bob bought my property he's an investor and you know if he took over my mortgage uh just kept making the payments on it because i was in over my head couldn't make the payments <laughs> buys with the trust right he buys with his trust he's got his trustee john doe well, the beneficiary of that trust is Bob. Now, I recommend you make your LLC the beneficiary of a trust, all right? Now, again, guys, uh, I'm not a, this is all informational purposes. I'm not a lawyer and I am not an accountant, okay? I don't have any of those certifications, but I am a go-getter and I have done this a lot, guys. And uh, guys, I just got my first subject too in April. Guess how many I own now? It's been three months, less than three months since I closed it. I got four subject twos and I've done five transactions creative financing transactions in four months. Prior to that, I had a few years of real estate investing. I did one or two deals because we couldn't get financing. It was so difficult. Three years, I did one or two deals. I found subject two. I went hard, studied, made a plan, um, got contracts, learned those front and back, had a lawyer look at them. In, four, in three months, guys, four properties, four investment properties. Um, I just had a lady call me yesterday too, so it's about to be five. I mean, day before yesterday. Um, so four properties, and then I've done five transactions with creative uh, financing. Guys, in three months, that's financial freedom. I was trying to be a real estate investor for three years. Three years, did a couple deals, man, and barely made it any money because you got to find fix and flips. You got to pay contractors and wait, you know, if they're sitting on their hands or whatever, guys. And my partner, guys, is a doctor. He's a doctor, and they didn't want to loan him money. So, um, guys... Subject two, it's the um, strategy for everyday people, okay? Uh, strategy for everyday people to get in this game without needing a large sum of money, all right? Uh, and not ha needing access to money. And we don't fill out credit reports, or nor do we um, nor do we fill out credit applications, show W-2s, debt to income, proof of funds. All those deals I've done in these last three months haven't showed proof of funds at all. Not one time, guys. Not one time. Haven't even been asked. Um, so, the due on sale. To avoid the due on sale, you buy with the trust. Now, I don't want you guys to be scared about the due on sale because think about it like this too. If a person is behind on their mortgage, because this isn't 1983 with those 20% interest rates, 14% interest rates, they're super low. So guys, um, if a person is behind on their mortgage and then they somehow get caught up and now their mortgage is being paid on time, a bank isn't going to want to foreclose on that. In, in 2008, when the banks foreclosed on all those properties, they hurt themselves bad super bad because they dropped the value of that uh, underlying asset and it hurt them 
it hurt them because that underlying asset didn't have as much value anymore, so they couldn't reloan that money out uh, um, with those interest rates to get profits. So they are not going to call that loan due, most likely. 99.9% .9 chance. I've never had a loan call due. Uh, uh, one of my mentors has never had a loan call due. Um, I have read court cases of loans being called due, um, but it wasn't even that big of a deal. Our purchase agreement with the go-getter family, we take care of all that, though. Our, our CTF letter, our cover the family letter, it, uh, um, it covers that as well. And then we have in our subject to document packet, which is only 99 bucks, cheapest on the market. Oh, my goodness. And it's quality, super high quality, man. I, my memorandum of contract is in their deal insurance. Anyway, um, um, what was I saying? Oh, our subject to doc packet, it's got the due on sale acknowledgement. Four, there's four clauses in there to make sure that everything is known on the up and up, all right? So guys, check that out, man. Um, um, you know, we've got some other products on there too, man, that will help get you there and they're super cheap. Uh, that Go-Getter Family subscription, the family member subscription, $29.99 a month, get you exclusive tutorial videos. There's me walking you through a bunch of stuff. It's got the categories in there, negotiating, um, contract, all types of stuff. Um, it's got documents. <laughs> guys, you wanna get there? <laughs> this is how you do it. So, do on sale. If you're worried about subject two and people try to warn you, oh, what about the do on sale? Oh, what about the sale final, as I heard a person call it? Man, whatever. We know what we're doing. We buy with the trust. See, you have layman's, people who are not real estate professionals who just are haters, man, or envious or whatever, or I'm just discouraging. Well, banks aren't going to let you do that. And what about that do on sale, buddy? I had a banker, man, commercial banker, man, ask me that, man. Dude, I know what I'm doing. Are we buying trust? Do you own your property in a trust? He's like, no. I was like, oh, you should, man. You know, you deal. You don't. You don't loan any money out under two hundred fifty grand for some big name corporate bank. You don't know about trust. Come on, man. I'm a professional here. So, guys, do on sale. Don't even trip as long as you do it right. All right. I gotta get up out of here, guys. Um, I do appreciate you watching. I hope that this brought you value and some actionable knowledge to help you close these transactions, guys. On. Um, a trust, buy and trust. And trusts are pretty simple. You know, my uh, one of my mentors says he's never even read a trust through and through um, front to back because it, you know, it doesn't really matter once you buy in a trust and then you don't record those documents. Um, I personally have read it because I've got to read everything that I'm dealing with in my contracts. But guys, it's that easy. It really is. Now, this whole process, it's it's simple, but it's not easy. Okay, so you, you gain some knowledge. You have a little discipline. Um, uh, you got a little go-getter in you. You got a lot of go-getter in you. And you're going to get these done. That person that called me about their house that I'm about, uh, another house I'm going to acquire, I was going out and knock, I knocked on her door before I even knew about subject two. When me and my um, partner were uh, investing in real estate the traditional way, I was trying to find pre-foreclosures. So knocked on her door, I talked to her, man, she liked me, you know, because I'm a good person, I want to help her. Um, and she called me back, it's been like four months ago or something, four and a half months ago, something like that. She called me back and now I know this strategy. <laughs> so it's on. And this house, it's in a neighborhood they call God's Country where I'm from. So it's a great neighborhood. I mean, how homes are going way over asking price in God's country. And um, they don't like that I'm purchasing in a lot of homes in God's country. But you know what? I'm glad they don't like it. I'm kind of, kind of am. I'm glad they don't like it because there's nothing they can do about it. So, and we're helping people, guys, you know. We're, um, we are stopping the seller from getting a foreclosure on their credit, right? Because that can damage your credit for seven to ten years. Kill you, man. It'll hurt you bad, you know. So we're stopping that. We're reinstating the loan for the bank. So they're going to continue. Now they're getting paid. They're getting those back payments, you know, figured out. And um, now they're getting their payments again. All right. They're making that interest. You know what I mean? Um, and then we on the on our exit strategy, we're selling to people um, and we sell. We don't rent. So we're selling to people that can't qualify for a traditional mortgage. It's awesome. We're selling to people that can't qualify for a traditional mortgage. Um, and uh, so now we're providing affordable home ownership for the community. And then to top it all off, we're helping ourselves and our families by making a little money, by the good service we provide, all right? So just think about that, guys. Uh, this is an investment strategy for the people, okay? Um, so I got to get up out of here, you know what I mean? But uh, until next time, let's get to it, y'all. Whip it like it's cream, live your dreams to go get a team. Now we on the scene, know what I mean? Shining like a beam.